Hello, welcome back to Man Cave Hobbies. So today's video is a collage of all kinds of stuff. I'll put an index down below. Uh, that way you can just skip all the stuff you're not interested in and get to the stuff you are. I have, a, I have quite a bit of stuff I want to cover today. Um, I'm going to try to make it as short as I possibly can, but it's a little hard when you're dealing with multiple subjects. Um, the very first one is I, I put up a couple of videos this last week, and it caused quite a stir, especially with the DJI fan, oh, fanboys. Um, damn, they're crazy. Jihadists, I swear. It's, it's a religion, and if you, if you speak anything negatively whatsoever about DJI, whoo. Um, but yeah, I did, and it was about the fitment of the helmet and, and whatever not, and it, you know, it just, mm, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. But you know, it also confused, I think, some people, because not all YouTube reviewers are shills and sock puppets and whatever not. We have some really good reviewers out there, and these are the ones that I follow, okay? I just want to, I just want to touch base on this. Nick Burns, Nick Burns has always been diplomatic, he's very enthusiastic, he's never glazed over anything negative on a product, he's always brought it up, and even if he didn't catch it the first time, he'll, he'll, he'll do a follow-up video, okay? Um, so I've always supported him, I've always clicked on his stuff, and if I buy stuff that I'm interested in and he's covering, I'll, I'll buy it off of his links. That helps him to support his channel so he can get more stuff to review. And, and I appreciate that. Uh, Andy RC. Andy RC has never been a shell, ever. Um, the guy's always been a straight up guy. Uh, Kebab FPV, I mean, come on. Bob's always been a straight up guy about everything he's always done. And he's created a whole other genre within our uh, hobby, you know, the toothpicks and whatever not. And I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, Painless, Painless 360, another another great reviewer out there. Not a shill, not a sock puppet. Um, who else? Uh, oh, RC Shim. RC Shim is kind of like Bruce at RC Model Review. Um, not not a shill whatsoever. You learn a lot of stuff from RC Shim. I really appreciate his channel. I just wish he had a little bit more content because I really do appreciate the videos that he does put up, and the and the amount of work he puts into these videos. Um, RC model review, uh, Bruce. I mean, come on, 250,000 subscribers naturally, not boosted, not. I don't want to. You you can boost these channels. You can buy subscribers. I mean, that's all there is to it. Or you can belong to groups and stuff like that to help you with your subscriber base. He has never done that. He has a Discord. That's all he's got. He doesn't shill sock puppet links. Um, you know, I mean, he, if he puts a link down below and it seems like something I'm interested in, I don't have a problem with that. But he's not a hard sell. So those are the guys that I trust, and, and there's, there's a few more out there, but those are, those are the guys that I trust because they don't glaze over the negatives. They, they tell you what it is, and that helps out us as consumers to make, be more well-informed about our purchasing decisions, and it also helps out the, the hobby because, you know, some of these manufacturers who make hobby-grade stuff, you know, as opposed to consumer-grade, go back to the drawing board and actually make it right. So I appreciate these guys. I just wanted to get that out there. The ones that I'm talking about, you know what the ones I'm talking about. It's always a hard sell. They're always overhyping a product. They, they do gloss over the negatives or they don't even speak of them. Um, and, and it's always, you know, this is the greatest drone in 2021 and then next week, this is the greatest drone in 2020. It's always some kind of commercial. It's just dumb. Um, so that, that I just want to get that out of the way right off the bat. Um, I did get my foam finally. It did fix these goggles as far as my fitment goes. It, it completely fixed it. So if you do get the DJI helmet, you got to get this foam, period. It's an extra $17. For some reason, DJI felt it not necessary just to include it in the package, which is stupid to me because this little piece of foam couldn't cost them more than maybe 30 cents to make. So it's kind of ridiculous. It's just another consumable to for a large corporation to make money. Um, however, these things still don't fit my wife's head. We tried them on her head. I was kind of hoping they would fit because I, I have to build her a drone now that she doesn't want the DJI drone. But I did get this, and I did finally get my Vista too after 14 days. So that's a warning to you. Do not ship anything USPS anymore. Trust me, 14 days out of California, really? Um, they're blaming COVID. They're blaming weather. They're blaming anything they possibly can. But let's face it, USPS has been going downhill for 20 years. I mean, anything government run or anything that has the government involved in it, it's going to run like crap. And we all know that. UPS is still on time. FedEx is still on time. I get stuff at the shop on time from them. But uh, USPS is just an absolute nightmare. And all of the other stuff I have for this goggle, I don't know where it is. It's been 18 days now. And um, it says it's coming from USPS. 
but it hasn't updated for five days now, my tracking number. It's absolutely asinine. I could order stuff from China and get it here faster through DHL. But I got this thing, and I got to tell you, it's really an engineering feat, as you know, m many of you know. Um, this thing is really absolutely incredible, the amount of engineering that went into this. But one thing I do have to say I don't understand is why are they having people solder on the board? There's plenty of room here for a plug. Why didn't they just make it plug and play? They have this end plugging into stuff, so why didn't they just put a plug right here? There's plenty of room right here for a plug. Why have a solder on the board? Because that's the biggest crux for new people. They don't want to solder. Period. And we don't seem to make anything for new people. I don't, I don't understand it. Everything should be plug and play today. And like I said, there's plenty of room here. So why don't they just put a plug there as opposed to having to solder or take the top off to solder it properly? It doesn't make any sense. But I can tell you right now, it's absolute clarity in the goggles. It's beautiful. It's not lossy. There's... The image is absolutely amazing. That's that's true. You know, same thing with the shark bite here. I don't know why Carl's having people solder on tiny little tiny soldering pads. You already put one and two plugs on here. Just put a third plug on there and make it plug and play. It, it that way you don't end up with cold solder joints. You don't end up with customer service issues if they overheat the board or if they accidentally slide off of the soldering iron. We're talking amateurs here, so try to make it as stupid proof as po possible. It, just put a plug on there. That's it. Um, so that leads me back down to the DJI here drone. So I wanted to get the DJI drone for the wife because I want it, I want to make her a part of my hobby. So we have something to do together. And quite frankly, um, I don't know where she's at, I need a spotter. So it's true. I need a spotter. So it would, it, it would kill two birds with one stone, if you will. I, I need, you know, it'd be fun to have her in the hobby plus have that spotter I desperately need. And um, yeah, we were gonna get the FPV, the, the FPV drone by DJI, and she said no. She's, it's, look, here's the deal. It's not that we don't have the money to do it, it's that she values her money for other things that we do need to do around the house here. Plus we just spent two grand on a dog that uh, I didn't know dogs could get diabetes, and I certainly didn't know that dogs could uh, be immune to insulin. So we just spent two grand on our little puppy and we got another month out of them, but that was it. And then we had to put them down uh, this last week. So that was really tough for us. But, um, I mean, when you're talking $1,300 for a drone, plus, you know, another set of batteries is 300 bucks, plus the DJI Care Kit was another 200 plus the foam, the whole nine yards. And even with the foam, it doesn't fit her head anyway. It, it's just, it's too much. So she asked me, you know, can't you just build me something? With all the stuff that you have down here, can't you just make me something? So that's my new project right now because... I went out there to find something for beginners in our hobby and there's nothing. There, there's nothing out there that truly takes a beginner from A to Z. Nothing at all. I mean all these brilliant engineers we have in our hobby, which is shrinking by the way, and because we're not picking up new people, we're actually losing people. I, I just don't understand why, why DJI can do it. And yet nobody else, nobody else in our hobby can do it. I, I don't get it. But when I'm talking about a complete kit here, I'm talking about, you know, a, a something that has a decent radio in it, not like a cheap piece of junk that can't be used with anything else so that the user doesn't have to buy a radio if they want to grow beyond that per particular product. Um, something like this, something that has OpenTX, something that can hook to a computer and play, you know, use a simulator. Uh, why the, why don't they offer that? Why don't they offer like a code or something to direct somebody to a simulator like FPV Freeloader, for example, which is absolutely free. The demo is, um, you know, a helmet, you know, just an analog helmet, something that's cheap and durable and works. It's got a decent enough receiver in it for analog. And then, of course, the quadcopter itself. The quadcopter itself needs to be 250 grams and below so that they don't have to register themselves as human beings with the FAA, which I don't understand under our constitution how that's even legal. I just don't. Um, in fact, I think there was a judge out there that said it wasn't. I don't know what ever happened with that. But it needs to be a game style radio as well. I forgot to bring that up because a lot of people are used to the PlayStation, they're used to their Xbox controllers. And that's why DJI did the same thing. They put a game style controller in their in their beginning package, their little beginner drone. And that's what needs to happen. It doesn't you don't want a big clunky thing. That it just it confuses people. Give them something that they're used to. Um, but the headset analog, just something that's comfortable on the head. 
it doesn't have to be super stylish it does have to have a price point to it and it does it does have to be able to be used with other equipment just in case they grow away from your current drone the drone needs to be 250 grams like i said before um and also it needs to be plug and play that's one thing soldering beginners don't like to solder they just don't just make the damn thing plug and play i mean if you make it sub 250 that should be pretty easy if they burn up a motor they can just plug a motor in um if they break the frame they can just put another you know put everything into another frame real simply I know we have brilliant engineers in this hobby. I know it can be done, but nobody's ever bothered to do it. And here comes DJI, and they're going to end up selling probably 30,000 of those drones this year. Truthfully, they are going to bring people into the hobby, sort of, meaning that they're going to bring people over, but I think that's pretty much where it's going to stop. They're just going to wait for another DJI product. Why? Because DJI is a consumer-grade product that's polished. Everything in our hobby is hobby-grade, experimental-grade. It's BS. Especially at this late stage in the game. I mean, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And I've seen this happen with the camera drone side where, you know, you had a lot of manufacturers over there making crap, uh, uh, incomplete, um, just absolute junk. And here comes DJI and just sweeps the floor with them. Same thing's going to happen here. I mean, truthfully. So all of these DJI beginners that are coming into the hobby, that will be coming into the hobby, they're just going to wait for another DJI product because there's nobody else out here smart enough to do exactly what they're doing over there. So, and hopefully that changes, I don't know. But you know, the one I'm gonna have to build my wife now is something that sort of flies by itself. So I'm gonna have to use an iNav. Um, I gotta find a flight controller that can use iNav, that has a target for iNav. And I'm gonna have to reach down back in the day when I used to make camera drones from scratch, including gimbals. But I'm gonna have to reach down and truly build a quadcopter that kind of flies itself in a way it has that alt hold it has that where she panics she can just let go of the sticks and stops um does everything that, that well not everything but most stuff that beginners need like the dji fpv drone does but be more durable it doesn't doesn't have geo fencing in the whole nine yards all of the negatives of the dji drone it doesn't have that i don't know why somebody can't do that but you know with all the brilliant engineers we have that seem to not fly the stuff that they make which brings me up to fat shark fat shark put out a statement uh which was kind of interesting they actually want us to finally start communicating with them and they want to communicate with us after a year and a half um and what I, here's the thing i don't understand maybe you can help me in the peanut gallery down below but you know you have red cat that's the parent company they bought rotor riot which is a marketing company that's what they do sell promotion and marketing and they have a little hobby shop as well right then they bought Fat Shark, which has got brilliant engineers. I mean, it's truly. Alan's brilliant. Greg's brilliant. These guys are truly, truly connected over there in China, and they're very, very brilliant guys. Why can't you have a little bit of synergy between those two? And then, I mean, Rotor Riot's got world-class pilots. I mean, they could tell you what to build. And then I don't understand it, and I don't understand why... Rotor Riot is shilling for DJI still. I mean, that's kind of a, it's just kind of counterproductive for Red Cat. It, it truly is. It would be like Microsoft buying GameStop and GameStop just selling Sony, you know, the PlayStations. Or Google buying Samsung and then buying Verizon and Verizon only wants to sell Apple. Now, I understand DJI does bring in the numbers. It does add pad the bottom line. I get that. But at the same time, I, I see no OEMs for the SharkBite system. I see nothing from Beta FPV, nothing from HDLRC, nothing from GEPRC, nothing from Happy Model, nothing from nobody. And I'm sorry, but if you don't have OEMs with the SharkBite in it, it's not going to be adopted. It's going to be adopted by very few people as opposed to the potential out there. You know, that's one thing about DJI is they know how to design a product. They know how to make it sexy looking because they have designers. And they just seem to know how their targeted audience, where everyone else in our hobby just doesn't. And that's what happened on the camera drone market. And that's why DJI took over and became a multi-billion dollar company. We have the potential to do something similar over here, but nobody's willing to take the brass ring. And I don't understand it. And I don't understand the lack of urgency. Because every day that goes by, hundreds of people are going to go to the DJI system. And that's, that's where the, the pie just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The number one 
the number one competitor for, for SharkBite and DJI is, is not each other, actually. It is analog. So if Fat Shark could honestly come out with a SharkBite system that's decently priced, not $50 for the Whoop board, but $35, and whatever they come up with, but decently priced systems that compete with analog to get guys to jump away from the analog to go to the SharkBite system, but you do have to you do have to improve the durability of these boards. You have to improve the durability of the production line so that people, when they get it, they have a good user experience. It's not like, hey, what's going on here? Um, it's good that they're gonna they're planning on doing something with Betaflight to support all of the features of the Betaflight OSD. I think that's great. I hope iNav can do the same thing, especially what I'm having to build for the wife. Um, and hopefully maybe somebody else, some other smart manufacturer can build a complete kit like I'm doing for the wife. Um, but yeah, I, I don't understand the lack of synergy between Fat Shark and Rotor Riot under, under the umbrella of Red Cat. I, I just don't. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't really, um, it doesn't give me a lot of confidence in their future, in their roadmap. I, I don't know even know what the roadmap is. It just seems like throwing darts at a wall right now. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that I don't know about. But I don't think so. I, I, I just don't see it. I don't see anything materializing. It's been so long now. And some of it, yeah, was COVID. But COVID's, I mean, you, you can only use that as a crutch for so long. DJI is certainly not using it as a crutch. I mean, they're they're coming out with stuff. So... I don't know, guys. That's my video for today. I do have other stuff coming, but like I said, USPS. Do not use USPS, by the way. Please don't. Um, they have a hold of it. I might get it next spring. Who knows? And I'm going to start ordering parts for the beginner drone that I'm going to have to build for her. And I'll show some build videos of that as well. I also have these parallel charging boards i got to get to because I do like these. There's some things I like about them and some things they need to improve upon, of course. Um, I do have the Josh Bardwell boards, and I, there's some things I like about this board, and some things I don't, but I'll cover that in my next video coming up. Have a great night. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it.